Welcome guys, I'm Gio here, hope you're having a great day. And finally, we discuss operators. So far, we've covered observables, the core data structure of the library, and how can we create them from scratch, how can we create them from different uh, sources, how they work internally, what events are available, and so on. And all of that is really important, and uh, if you have any doubts or questions, about the uh, things we've covered before, please go and watch the videos because if you understand the topics there that I have discussed, the rest that I'm about to explain will be very easy and avoid a lot of confusion. Operators are a crucial part of RxJS library. If you only want to use observable, probably you don't even need the library because it's not that hard to implement the observable itself. And also, it's not that much useful. What makes RxJS so useful though is the amount of operators that it provides to work with the observables. So what is operator? Well, it's just a simple function that takes in observable and returns the observable. So it's, it's like this, observable in, observable out. And during this process, when we apply the operator function, this is going to transform probably the source observable and in the end we will receive output observable that is modified and that is based on the source. What makes operators so powerful? Well, they are composable, meaning that the operator functions doesn't depend on any particular observable. They can be applied to any observable. So we can arrange them, chain them together, apply them to different observables and uh, they will just work. That's why it is so useful. In RxJS, comes with a lot of operators, and during this series we're gonna cover uh, a lot of them, and uh, the ones that I have personally used a lot and I think that are very, very useful. Okay, enough of the theory. Now let's move on to some specifics. Let's check our example first. We have our main.js file here, and uh, we have observable that is listening to input events on the text input and then we are just subscribed to it and we're logging the event let's check this in the browser as i'm typing text here it is throwing input event and from this event we can extract the text that is here in this input how we get the text specifically well we have to access event target value Let's check again, type in something, and as you see, we have received the text. Let's ask this question. How can we make observable that represents the text that user is typing into the text field? Not extracting the text after we subscribe, but to create the observable that represents that. Well, we can create operator function for that, and we're gonna do this ourselves. As I've said before, operator is just a function that takes observable and returns new observable. So let's do that. We have the first part. This is a function that receives observable. It's source in this case, we named it source. And now we have to return a new observable and we know how to do that. We have learned it in the beginning of our series. So let's create and return new observable. This is our operator. We receive the source, which is probably observable, it should be observable, and we return new observable. And it's not doing anything right now, but this is where we put our logic into action. So let's remember that whenever user is subscribed to observable, this function will be executed. So we know when user subscribes to our observable that we have returned through this. So once user is subscribed to that, the next thing we want to do is to subscribe the source at the same time. Now source can be anything, any observable, but in this case, since you're extracting the text that user is typing, we are expecting that this observable, the source, represents the input event. So let's do that.
Okay, let's stop for a second and understand what's going on. We have this operator. Someone is going to pass in our, the, the source, the source observable, that this operator is applied. And the neck, then we return a new observable, which is our own custom observable. And when someone will subscribe to our observable, this one, this function will be executed. And we receive the subscriber. So at this point, when someone is subscribed to us, we internally subscribe to source and we listen. And whenever we receive the new value, since we are expecting here input event, uh, we are extracting whatever the text is inside this input event. And then we are passing it to our subscriber. So it's like the chain. To better visualize, let's look at this. So we have input event observable, and then we are applying our operator, and it yields a new observable that will return the text. Okay, how can we apply this to our input observable then? Well, that is very easy. We just have to pass an input observable, and we will receive the observable that returns the text. So let's do that. And as you see, it is working fine. So let's recap what we have achieved here. We have created our custom operator, which is just a function, nothing else. It receives the source observable, and returns our new observable. And whenever someone subscribes to our observable, this one, we in turn subscribe to our source back. And whenever we receive the value from the source, we transform it by extracting the value, in this case it will be a text, and passing it to our subscriber. Now as you see in our subscription, we just receive the text and it is working fine. We have observable that is representing the text, the actual text that the user is typing into the input field. So let's add the option for our map operator that will allow us to pass in the mapping function and then use that operator and transform different values. So let's do that. And as you see, it is working just fine. So let's check our code and explain what's going on here. Because we are making uh, our operator more generic, it requires mapping function. So instead of directly creating the operator function, we are creating a factory function. And this function is going to receive the mapping function that we have passed here. It is to extract the text from this case. And then it returns the operator, the actual operator that is based on this mapping function. And uh, the rest is the same. So if you look at this, we have this map, we are passing a mapping function. And after this function is executed, we receive the operator. And then we can apply this operator to any observable. So that's what exactly we're doing here. So first call here, is to generate the actual operator function and we are passing our mapping function and after the operator is generated and we receive after this call we are passing our input observable and it is working fine we are receiving the results now it is more flexible and we can change the logic how we extract the value from the source so let's say i want to just check on the target and it is very easy. I can remove value and check the results. And as you see, when I'm typing, I have received this exact element that the event is generated from. Map operator is already in the RxJS library and you don't have to write this. The only reason I have 
created our custom operator here is so you can understand how these operators work behind the scenes. In the end, the operator is just a function that receives observable and returns another observable, probably transforming it into something else. Most of the time we have the operator creation functions, higher order functions like the map here, and uh, that's just how they work. So let's uh, comment this section out and use the actual map operator from RxJS library. Let's check the results. And exactly, it is working as it was working before because, well, it's a map operator and it is from library right now. Let's reorganize these things. First of all, I want to get rid of this input ops and directly put this here because we are not really using input observable. We are just uh, using it to generate new observable and we can do it directly by putting this here. Now let's move these things up so it's nice and clean. And let's make this a text observable again. So we should pass in value. Check the result. And yeah, it is working. We have reorganized things. We have covered the map operator. And uh, now let's move further. Let's say that we are using this observable to make HTTP requests to a server where we are making some search based on the given text that user is typing in. Now, in this in that case, uh, the desired functionality might be that we want to make requests when the text that user has typed in meets a certain constraints. Let's say we want to make sure that if the text is larger than three characters, only then we are going to make the search. And there can be many reasons for that. Uh, to make fewer requests, it makes maybe search easier on the backend and so on. And for this, we are going to be using filter operator. So let's do that. Let's check the result. And as you see, I'm not receiving anything in the console. Now, once the text is longer than three characters, it is working fine. It is just doing what we wanted to do. And look how easy it was to achieve this functionality because our XGS has filter operator and it's very easy to use. Now, again, let's reorganize things here since we are using this observable just to generate filter text observable. Let's move this down here. So here it is. We have you know covered the basic operators here. As I've said before, operator is just a function that receives the observable and returns new observable. It needs the source and it will generate the rest itself. So if we look at this code, our source is input event that is generated by user typing into the input field. Then we apply map operator, which returns another observable, which is already a text represented. And after that, on this observable, we apply filter operator. This finally gives us the final observable that will only return the texts that are longer than three characters. So this is how it works. Now, here's a problem, though. If you look at this code, it's not really easy to understand. You know, you have to go down, you have to check the source, then you have to move up, and it's it's not really easy to read. But there is another way we can achieve all of that, and uh, it's called a pipe function that is available for all the observables. So let's do that. In this case, we take the source first. This is our source. This is how we generate our final observable. It is based on that. And now we can use the pipe function that is available on this observable. 
In pi function, we can pass in our operators one by one in the sequence that we want them to be applied. So first, we want to extract the text from the source, which will be a map operator. And then we want to filter the results. So this will be a next operator and it will be filter. Let's check the results. And as you see, it is returning the text that is more than three characters long. And it is just the same like it was before. But now, if you check that, it is much easier to read. Let's compare. Here you have source observable. And that's easy. You just check that. And then you have the pipe and you already see the sequence how these operators are applied. In this case, you have to start from here and then move up there and then check that again. And it's, it's, it's really hard to work. So that's why you should always use operators with pipe function. You should never ever do that. I have just done that to show you this, you know, for demonstration purposes. Behind the scenes, the pipe function will apply these um, operators and generate the final output, which is exactly the same. To clear out any confusion, I can show you that even our operator will work with pipe function because it is operator. As I've said before, it is receiving the source, which is observable, and it is returning new observable. So let's call this custom map. And instead of map, let's use this. Let's use custom map so it clears out any confusion. And as you see, it is working just fine. Now you can clearly see that there's not really any magic behind the pipe function. And certainly there is no magic with operators as well. They are just the functions that receive observable and return new observable. That's how it is. And because they are composable, they can be applied to any observable. And they can be chained together and the sequence matters and you know we can achieve many many different things because of these operators and we're going to cover them of course now i want to mention that you don't have to create custom operators a lot of times whatever ships with arcgis is enough and it will cover most of the cases only when you truly need your custom operators you can do that but also please uh, keep in mind that you have to uh, make sure that you have cleanup function there in uh, your custom observable and you have to listen error and completion events here and properly notify the subscribers and you know there are a lot of details that's why you know if you if you have uh, some a problem that you need to solve just go there to documentation page check the operator there is a high chance that you will find the necessary operator or combination of operators that will achieve uh, desired result. The, the only reason I did this here is to show you that there is no magic behind these operators and they work similarly to what we've done here. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Click the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends.